my name is Gloria Jimenez. I'm the executive director of the Indiana Latino Expo and welcome to the Mayor's Breakfast. Last year, we didn't have a breakfast, but this year is back and virtual. And of course, televised on Telemundo Indy. I'm really grateful with the mayors that are participating from around the cities um, here of the state of Indiana. Thank you to our sponsors, Indiana University, Ivy Tech Community College, Managed Health Services, and of course, AES Indiana, former IPL. Thank you so much for your continued support, and I hope you have your cup of coffee and enjoy the mayor's breakfast. Indiana Latino Expo Show. Hola amigos, ¿cómo están? Soy Gloria Jiménez, directora ejecutiva del Indiana Latino Expo. Este año tenemos el desayuno de los alcaldes de regreso por Telemundo Indy y también virtual. Espero que ustedes aprendan de todo lo que estos alcaldes han hecho durante la pandemia y cómo sobrevivir y salir de aquella, no solo a través de... Eh, de los, en las ciudades, sino colaborando con otras organizaciones. Quiero agradecer a cada uno de los que han participado y también en especial a nuestros auspiciadores, Indiana University, Ivy Tech Community College, Managed Health Services, AES Indiana, que antes era IPL, y pues muchísimas gracias. Espero que tengan su taza de café y disfruten del desayuno de los alcaldes. Indiana Latino, eres poco, poco, poco. Solo por Telemundo Indy. Continúas con Indiana Latino Expo Show. Good morning. My name is Corey Ewing. I am the Chief Operating Officer of MHS. MHS is proud to sponsor this year's Indiana Latino Expo Mayor's Breakfast. MHS is a health insurance company offering Medicaid, Medicare, and marketplace coverage to Hoosiers statewide. As a health plan, it's our job to remove barriers and empower our members so they can take charge of their own health. Each person has unique needs, beliefs, and cultural differences, and each person deserves to be treated with dignity and respect. We can't do this important work without the support of partners like the Indiana Latino Expo. MHS has been working closely with the amazing IIL team for many years now, and we are truly honored to be your partner. Your experience and reputation within the community have helped MHS do a better job serving our members. This morning, we gather virtually to support the Latino community. While the unique circumstances of the COVID-19 pandemic are not allowing us to gather together in person, I still look forward to celebrating your accomplishments and gaining inspiration virtually this morning as we continue to work to transform the health of our communities one person at a time. Thank you. Indiana Latino Expo Show. Hola, soy María Luisa Tischner, President of the Board of the Indiana Latino Expo. I am very happy to announce the breakfast mayor this year. We didn't have it last year because COVID-19. We uh, want to focus on mayors uh, in Indiana to help Latinos in um, their cities or the, uh, where they are living right now. So um, this wasn't an easy task. We need the collaboration of the city, the community, the financial organizations in a difference Uh, Latino not-for-profit organization and uh, also the federal government. We would like to thank the collaboration of the mayor from South Bend, Lawrence, and nuestro mayor de Indianapolis. Hope you enjoy and thank you for your support to the Indiana Latino Expo. Hola, soy María Luisa Tischner, la presidenta de la Junta Directiva del Indiana Latino Expo. Uh, estoy muy contenta de traer nuevamente el Breakfast with the Mayor. No tuvimos el año pasado por lo del COVID-19 y queremos enfocarnos en los uh, alcaldes de Indiana que, han, que tienen la mayoría de latinos y cómo han ayudado a su comunidad. Esta ha sido una tarea muy difícil 
Ah, y hemos necesitado el apoyo de la ciudad, la comunidad, las organizaciones financieras, eh, el, por el federal government y también diferentes organizaciones de, sin fines de lucro. Quiero agradecer al alcalde de South Bend, Lawrence, y por supuesto a nuestro alcalde de Indianápolis. Gracias por su colaboración y ayuda. Espero go, eh, gocen del programa y nuevamente gracias por apoyar el Indiana Latino Expo. Hello, my name is Ruth Morales. I'm the director for the Office of International and Latino Affairs here uh, in the office of Mayor Joe Hogsett. Thank you to Indiana Latino Expo for today's Mayor's Breakfast. And also I would like to thank uh, the City of Indianapolis Mayor's Latino Advisory Council. They have been very instrumental in supporting our Latino community here in Indianapolis and making sure that during the pandemic, the Latino community has uh, access to the resources such as rental assistance, um, information regarding the COVID-19 vaccine and how to register. So very thankful to the Mayor's Latino Advisory Council as well as our co-chairs, uh, Angela, Brito de Rodriguez y Yesenia Costado. So, uh, appreciate their leadership, appreciate all the members of the Mayor's Latino Advisory Council who are serving in our community here in Indianapolis. Continúas con Indiana Latino Expo Show. I'm Yesenia Tostado. I'm the Executive Director of Project Azul. I also serve as co-chair of the Indianapolis Mayor's Latino Advisory Council and as a member of the Access Steering Committee. I'm excited to welcome you all here today to the annual Indiana Latino Expo Mayor's Breakfast. This year, we're holding the event virtually. We'll be interviewing Indianapolis Mayor Joe Hogsett, Lawrence Mayor Steve Collier, and South Bend Mayor James Mueller. We'll be talking to each to each of them about the city's efforts to engage the Latino community as we emerge from the COVID-19 crisis, as well as other initiatives that they have in place to engage the Latino community in their cities. Thank you all for joining us. We hope that you stay informed and stay engaged with your city's government. Continuas con Indiana Latino Expo Show. We are joined here today by Mayor Joe Hogsett, the mayor of Indianapolis. Mayor, thank you so much for being here with us. How are you? I am fine and I'm so happy to be with everyone. I'm sorry we're not in person, but uh, hopefully next year we will be able to return. Absolutely. Well, let's dive into some questions, Mayor. I know that in the onset of COVID-19, the Latino community was being disproportionately impacted in the city and, and um, public Health Department implemented some additional efforts to make sure that the Latino community was reached. Um, comment on those please, as well as comment on how you're implementing and, and integrating the Latino community in the recovery plan from COVID-19. Very good question. Uh, and there's no, there's no doubt that uh, the Latinx community in Indianapolis was disproportionately affected by the COVID-19 uh, virus. Uh, most importantly, I think, was our uh, rapid response through our rental assistance programs uh, to those families who faced the potential eviction because of job loss uh, or, or just because of economic uncertainty. Uh, over the course of uh, the last year, we have provided rental assistance for families all throughout the community, but particularly in the Latinx community those who are uh, needing uh, assistance to stay housed to the tune of about $53 million, which I think have uh, positively impacted 
uh, nearly 30,000 families. Uh, and in our budget for next year, uh, we have a significant amount of money in addition for rental assistance. We're actually in negotiation with the state of Indiana to obtain up to 90 to $100 million in state uh, COVID allocations that went unused. The state is wanting to use our rental assistance program to pump 90 to 100 million more dollars. So that's a good example of how we have tried to attempt to help our neighbors who are most vulnerable in very meaningful ways. Other things that we did to try to communicate uh, what was available uh, to people throughout Indianapolis, but particularly to those who uh, are, are Latinx uh, residents, uh, we, um, we held two full days of community outreach by phone uh, and had uh, uh, accessible uh, operators that either people could call in or we were making calls to people throughout the community to make sure uh, that in Spanish, uh, you know, uh, Spanish speaking folks would be fully aware of everything that was available to them uh, we, uh, we, we did an enormous amount of outreach in terms of our mobile uh, vaccine clinics, for example, to try to take, not, not expect people to come into a healthcare center to be vaccinated, but to take the vaccines to the people. Uh, and I think that that made a difference as well. So uh, that type of outreach, and of course the Mexican, uh, the Mexican consulate uh, we, did, we did a bunch of activities in conjunction with the Mexican consulate to try to get the word out. So um, it hasn't always been successful, but I think that Indianapolis can take great pride in the fact that uh, the efforts we have made have made a real difference. Now, I, could, I, I can't help but, but end by saying, if you have not been vaccinated, please do so because you're not only protecting yourself and the fam your family and your loved ones, but you're frankly helping us get through the, uh, the COVID-19 crisis uh, fully and uh, finally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know that several years ago, your office started a partnership with the Indiana Latino Expo to launch the AXIS Leadership Program, which is a program for young Latino professionals. Um, tell us about your motivation both to start that as well as your goals of what you hope these young, young professionals will go on to achieve in the city. Several years ago, uh, the, the mayor's Latino Advisory Council really came up with the idea of having the mayor's office and the city of Indianapolis partner with them in the creation of the AXIS program. And it, I think it has been enormously successful in helping the outreach to young uh, Latinx leaders the leaders of tomorrow, uh, giving them the kind of uh, training and background uh, that they uh, sometimes lack uh, access to. Uh, and we've now graduated uh, several different classes of young leaders. And I truly do believe that that type of investment is profound for leadership for tomorrow, not just in the Latinx community, although I would hope that their commitment would be uh, to help lift up uh, as many of our Latino neighbors as they can. But it's really a leadership program in all senses of that word for leadership for the city of Indianapolis uh, in the future. And um, that's why I'm so proud that we have partnered uh, and been able to support the idea originally offered by the Latino Advisory Committee uh, and make it real. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the Latino Advisory Council. Um, talk to us about the Latino Advisory Council and how you use that to further reach the Latino community. Well, I, I think it is, uh, it is an organization of leaders that truly give direction to me and to the administration. Uh, first and foremost, about what the priorities for the Latinx community are. I mean, there, there's no presumption that the mayor knows what's best for everyone. In fact, maybe what's best for the mayor is to do a, a lot of listening to people who are out in the community 
and who really have a good feel for what the needs truly are. So I think first and foremost, as I said, the uh, Latino Advisory uh, Council provides us with direction uh, about where resources ought to be allocated, uh, what initiatives ought to take priority over other initiatives, or where initiatives need to be started. Um, it also certainly helps in the area of uh, language access uh, because um, you know we have so many Spanish-speaking uh, neighbors, and uh, if if you're not a Spanish speaker, and I am not, you need a liaison, uh, someone there to serve um, so that everyone is communicating in effective ways. And so it, there's a multiplicity of different benefits, but those are the, the few that come immediately to mind. Great, and then as a final question, Mayor, you've certainly learned a lot about how to engage the Latino community over your two terms. What advice would you give to other city leaders as they embark on this journey? Well, I think that everyone in the city-county enterprise, and frankly, I would encourage private sector and a charitable not-for-profit sectors to do the same, many are, and that is emphasize diversity, equity, and inclusivity for all of Indianapolis. Um, that includes you know, the growing Latinx community, but frankly, it doesn't leave out anyone. I mean, uh, Indianapolis is becoming a much more international and cosmopolitan city every day, so everyone's voice deserves to be heard. Uh, and that's what I would encourage, is, is that whether it be uh, the public sector, whether it be private sector, whether it be not-for-profit and community organizations that we emphasize equity in ways that perhaps heretofore really weren't given the priority that they deserve today. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Mayor, for your time today. I've been, uh, I've been uh, overjoyed to participate. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Indiana Latino Expo Show. We are joined by the mayor of South Bend, Mayor Mueller. Mayor Mueller, welcome so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Good to be here. Great. Um, so we know that South Bend has about 15% of its population who identify as Latino. Tell us more about your efforts to engage the Latino community to make sure they're involved in local government, both in engaging with city services and government decision making. Yeah, they they make up a, a big part of our community, and South Bend uh, is a, is a city of immigrants, and, and uh, many of our Latinos families are are now living in the very neighborhoods that uh, immigrants of previous generations uh, have lived in. So these are uh, oftentimes older neighborhoods, and uh, working to make sure the infrastructure in those neighborhoods is as good there as across the city, and uh, make sure that we're reaching our residents. Uh, across the city and uh, getting them engaged in the process. So there's a lot of different ways to do that. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we uh, meet with uh, leaders of every neighborhood and, and uh, group. And uh, we also work to make things accessible for uh, city services. So um, getting more and more uh, materials and information out uh, in, in other languages and Spanish being uh, particularly important for our community and making sure that that, that communication barrier doesn't uh, persist. Great. Um, talk to us about South Bend's COVID-19 recovery plan. How did you consider the needs of the Latino community as you created and implemented this recovery plan? Well, I mean, unfortunately, we know that uh, COVID-19 exposed some inequities uh, that already existed before the pandemic, as well as ex exacerbated uh, some of the inequities. And so uh, during our recovery efforts, we've been uh, sure to look at uh, how can we help those uh, residents most in need. And, and uh, this, uh, our Latinos community, it, it was uh, one in which, you know, businesses were struggling to get access to financing. So trying to make sure they would have access to the funds to be able to survive 
uh, through the worst of it. And now that we're looking forward uh, coming out of the pandemic, make sure that they have access to the resources they need to, to thrive as uh, our recovery uh, gets underway. And, and uh, a big priority of the Biden administration and the American Rescue Plan and the dollars we're looking to spend here locally is on equitable recovery. So making intentional decisions to direct those funds to ensure equity. Great, thank you so much, Mayor Mueller. We certainly appreciate your focus on equitable recovery as we all try to emerge from this COVID-19 crisis. Um, thank you so much for your time today and um, we look forward to working with you in the future. All right, thanks so much. Indiana Latino Expo Show. We have the honor of being joined here today by Mayor Steve Collier from the City of Lawrence. Mayor, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Great. Well, thank you. Um, so we want to dive into a few questions. Okay. What efforts has the City of Lawrence implemented to make sure that Latinos are engaged with their city services and programs? Well, we're proud to tell you that the our Latino population continues to grow. Uh, it's the fastest growing minority population in Lawrence and has been for quite some time. To that end, um, probably we're, we're about on our third year now where we are uh, doing uh, specific translation in our DPW department and in all of our, on our website and our Facebook page where we have uh, actual, actual Latino speakers. We're not, we got rid of Google Translate. That wasn't working out very well for us. So we actually, actually uh, Spanish speakers who are now translating everything on our city's website. Our DPW now, all of our permitting and licensing licensing has now been translated into Spanish. Um, so that's created a much easier ability for those who come in and need a license or a permitting to, to, to work through that. As I mentioned earlier, I am lucky enough to have a Spanish speaking executive assistant. Sometimes uh, they will, if, if there was a, if there was some uh, disconnect in being able to communicate, she'll go down there and help translate. Um, she, uh, she, she, she's been a huge help for us in terms of making that more comfortable. Um, in addition to the, our outreach, we are, both our police and fire, we are very uh, much concentrating on community policing. And so we're very intentional about getting into communities, making our Latino population feel more comfortable being around our public safety people. More of a problem with police than it is fire, quite frankly. Uh, it is a problem that we continue to address kind of aggressively. But as we continue to be more and more accessible, uh, it, be it becomes less of a problem uh, for us and for our police department. We do have uh, Spanish speakers available for both fire and police for all three shifts. So that if something happens and we need some a translator or, or Spanish speaking only, we can get them out there to make it easier and to make them feel more comfortable. As the city emerges from the COVID-19 crisis, what have risen to the top as the most pressing issues for the Latino community? And how are you working to address those issues? Yeah, probably for us, and if I'm specifically Latino community, uh, is that there is a bit of an issue with Latinos getting the vaccine uh, in terms of showing their ID. Uh, I don't think I realized how big of a problem that could be. Uh, you know, I went in and got my vaccine and I'm 66 years old. So I was one of the first ones to get it done. Uh, but we're continuing to, ex to have uh, issues with getting our Latino population into getting their vaccine. Um, I mean, one thing is, is that there is this lack of information or lack of communication that the vaccine doesn't cost anything. Uh, many of our Latinos don't have adequate health insurance coverage for a whole host of different reasons but they believe that it's going to cost them money to go in. And they also have a bit of a fear of giving their uh, ID or whatever it is and then being tracked. Uh, important to understand that the city of Lawrence, our police department has nothing to do uh, with uh, catching uh, illegal immigrants, you know, or, or catching undocumented. We don't do, we don't do any of that. We don't have, we have no concern with that. Hard to get that information out there, but at any rate, that was an issue with COVID-19 that, uh, I wasn't really even aware of uh, until, uh, like I said, until Damaris told me uh, what was happening. There. So we are actually going to have more kind of more localized vaccine availability at our farmer's market. We're going to be able to have vaccine clinics there at the farmer's market as they come in. 
we're lucky enough to have fairly good participation uh, in of Latino families coming in and uh, back and forth. So if we have that there, we can perhaps improve some vaccination. Great. Well, thank you so much, Mayor. Uh, we certainly appreciate your efforts and thank you so much for being with us here today. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Indiana Latino Expo Show. Thank you so much for watching the Indiana Latino Expo Mayor's Breakfast. I hope you enjoy it. Follow us on social media, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, and LinkedIn. And if you like this video, please share it with other uh, friends and community members from Indiana. Muchas gracias por ver el desayuno de los alcaldes del Indiana Latino Expo. Espero que se hayan beneficiado con toda la información y muchas gracias a todos los alcaldes y a todos los que han participado de este show. Yesenia, gracias por las entrevistas. A Ruth, María Luisa por tu liderazgo y en especial a nuestros alcaldes. Que disfruten el resto del día. Indiana Latino Expo Show. Latino, eres poco, oh, 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 oh. Latino, eres poco, oh, 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 oh. Show. Solo por Telemundo.